Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the new Paradigm Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hi, I'm Whit Watson with your Golf Central update. The news that shocked everyone in golf yesterday, the PGA Tour, the DP World Tour, and the Public Investment Fund announcing a landmark agreement to unify the game of golf on a global basis. A seismic shift for the entire sport. PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan joining George Savarikas and myself on Golf Today. To be able to say that we're now on a path of, of unification um, and ultimately for our fans to think that you know, as we go forward here over time um, to be able to reunite and, and, and bring the best players in the world together uh, on the sta same stage, to be able to have a partner that can invest back in the fan experience, albeit at our tournaments, uh, all through our broadcast uh, agreements and arrangements, and to be able to do so in a way we're investing in the game throughout the world uh, is very exciting. And, uh, you know, again, to be able to take uh, someone that has been a competitor, an aggressive competitor over the last two years, and to have that entity now be a product productive minority investor and for us to all be aligned uh, is very exciting. But to your question on the player meeting, you know, it's... Um, this news uh, was a shock to many, including to a lot of our players. And so to be able to walk into that player meeting, you know, six and a half, five and a half hours after it was announced, uh, there are a lot of questions. Um, you know, at times it was an intense, uh, an intense meeting. And, you know, I, I tried to address uh, what this means for them. And ultimately, it's a great day for the game. It's a great day uh, for the PGA Tour and our players. And that's something that uh, will bear itself out as we as we go down this path together uh, as partners. But, you know, listen, I, I think it's uh, the suddenness of this is a shock to to the membership and a, set, a setback in some respects. But we've begun the process of of communicating and starting to identify for them uh, how this is going to work and all the positives to this, recognizing there are a lot of questions. And, Jay, that leads to the next question. You mentioned the word shock. Given the magnitude of the deal, why were the members of this member-led organization not included or not told about it? You know, I, I think if you, you know, anytime you're, let's just go back over the last couple of years. I think, I think the the feud between the PGA Tour and Live has been pretty well documented, uh, and I, I think I think when you get into conversations like this. Uh, there needs to be confidentiality. And for me, I've spent my entire tenure here listening to our players. You know, over the last couple of years, I'm so proud of the way that they have rallied behind the, the tour, rallied behind this organization. You know, every single conversation that I've had that preceded our discussions with the PIF, you know, was really driven by those conversations and ultimately trying to do the best thing for the PGA Tour and our sport. But if you start opening this up uh, and, 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 and you're, you're asking opinions and you're sharing where this is going, ultimately, it, it's going to be di very difficult for us to be able to get to the result that we've gotten to. And as the leader of this organization, um, that's one of the great challenges I had. I'm, I'm someone that, that, that always wants to be transparent and always wants to communicate exactly where we are. But in this situation... Uh, it was important that I, you know, work alongside our board and, and, and pursue what we thought was best for the PGA Tour uh, and maintain that confidentiality because, again, I, don't, I think if, if it hadn't been that way, I'm not certain we would have gotten to this result. Jay, you have uh, players in the meeting I spoke with after. They said they, said they felt a sense of betrayal and hypocrisy from what was the outward-facing messaging from the PGA Tour to then feel blindsided by the announcement that was made yesterday. What are the steps to regain trust in the membership that the messaging will be more transparent going forward so they understand what the next steps are? Yeah, I think, listen, there's no question that um, yesterday was a setback, and I've had, you know, setbacks before. And, and I think in terms of rebuilding the trust, it starts with conversations that you know, we're had through the night last night and, and being here in the morning and talking to players and explaining to them uh, this deal and how this is a great outcome for every PGA Tour member uh, and the game. And I don't expect everybody to understand it uh, right off the bat. I think this is going to take some time. 
Uh, but I think as you look out over the horizon, I'm entirely confident when I talk to our players that that's where we are going to take them. Uh, so that's, you know, that, that, that is essentially um, where we are right now, and, and, and we'll continue to have those transparent conversations now that we're in a position where we've identified what the framework is and ultimately where, uh, where, where we're going to go. But listen, I mean, we're, the PGA Tour is in a control position with a productive investor. Uh, we've got a lot of flexibility in our business. We have an opportunity through productive investment capital to, to, to reinvest in, in our tour and our membership, to reinvest in our game. Uh, and I think this is something that when you look, when anybody looks three, five, ten years down the road, I firmly believe, I'm confident um, that, uh, that, that those results will, will be delivered. In retrospect, looking back over the last 12 to 18 months, maybe two years, would you change anything about how you approached the topic of live? And if so, what would you change? You know, I think there's, uh, there are always things that, um, that you, you would change. And what I've tried to do is in every single moment with the information that I had and my knowledge of where things stand, try and make the best decisions and communicate uh, those decisions, you know, to, to the membership. And as we sit here today, I understand the criticism I'm receiving um, around the hip hypocrisy and me being hypocritical given my commentary and my actions over, you know, over the last couple of years. And as we go forward, as we went forward and, uh, and we reached a compromise, you know, that was seriously, I mean, that was obviously one of, my, one of my great considerations. But any hypocrisy, I have to own. Um, nobody else. That's on me. It shouldn't be directed uh, at the membership. It should be directed at me. But again, as we sit here today, I'm confident uh, that we've done something that's in the best interest of our sport and ultimately in the best interest of PGA Tour members. Jay, the 9-11 Families United made a strong statement yesterday. They said you co-opted the 9-11 community in taking a moral stance against Liv. How would you respond to that group? Well, I, um, I read Terry's comments. Uh, I, I, you know, obviously acknowledge her loss and completely understand her position. And to the question that you were just asking, you know, I wish, I think about the fact that I allowed confidentiality to prevail here. And in allowing confidentiality to prevail, I did not communicate to very important constituents, including the families of 9-11. And I regret that. Uh, I, I, I really do. Um, but as we sit here today, you know, I, I, think, I think it's important to, you know, to reiterate that um, I feel like the move that we've made and, and how we move forward is in the best interest of our sport. We've eliminated those fractures. Um, but for, for any, uh, any difficulties I've caused on that front, Again, I have to own that as well, and that comes back to communication.